Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. We're glad to have you with us this evening. Let's begin by singing hymn number 47. I will read the first and second verses. Day by day, the manna fell. Oh, to learn this lesson well, still by constant mercy fed. Give me, Lord, my daily bread. Day by day, the promise reads, daily strength for daily needs. Cast foreboding fears away. Take the manna of today. Hymn number 47.
I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from our Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. First, the Bible. Matthew. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jeremiah. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Psalms. O taste and see that the Lord is good. They that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Exodus. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the, fr- the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, Upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. And he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Proverbs Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall speak truth. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. 
Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, or ever the earth was, when there was no, were no depths. I was brought forth, when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. When he prepared the heavens, I was there, when he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. And my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Psalms When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Mark Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of Jesus' disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashen hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashen hands. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of none effect. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, and he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart. Luke And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, 
Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. 1 Corinthians For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, that according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Matthew At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. Isaiah The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The Bible teaches transformation of the body by the renewal of spirit. Take away the spiritual signification of Scripture, and that compilation can do no more for mortals than can moonbeams to melt a river of ice. The error of the ages is preaching without practice. Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God and obey only the divine principle, life and love. Here is the great point of departure for all true spiritual growth. The substance of all devotion is the reflection and demonstration of divine love, healing sickness, and destroying sin. Our Master said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. First in the list of Christian duties, he taught his followers the healing power of truth and love. 
He attached no importance to dead ceremonies. It is the living Christ, the practical truth, which makes Jesus the resurrection and the life to all who follow him indeed. Obeying his precious precepts, following his demonstration, so far as we apprehend it, we drink of his cup, partake of his bread, are baptized with his purity, and at last we shall rest, sit down with him in a full understanding of the divine principle which triumphs over death. For what says Paul? As often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. One's aim, a point beyond faith, should be to find the footsteps of truth, the way to health and holiness. We should strive to reach the Horeb height where God is revealed and the cornerstone of all spiritual building is purity, the baptism of spirit, washing the body of all the impurities of flesh, signifies that the pure in heart see God and are approaching spiritual life and its demonstration. Jesus loved little children because of their freedom from wrong and their receptiveness of right. While age is halting between two opinions or battling with false beliefs, youth makes easy and rapid strides towards truth. Christian science demonstrates that none but the pure in heart can see God, as the gospel teaches. In proportion to his purity is man perfect, and perfection is the order of celestial being, which demonstrates life in Christ, life's spiritual ideal. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for sinful beliefs to enter the kingdom of heaven, eternal harmony. Through repentance, spiritual baptism, and regeneration, mortals put off their material beliefs and false individuality. It is only a question of time when they shall know They shall all know me, God, from the least of them unto the greatest. Denial of the claims of matter is a great step toward the joys of spirit, towards human freedom and the final triumph over the body. This is life eternal, says Jesus, is, not shall be. And then he defines everlasting life as a present knowledge of his Father and of himself, the knowledge of life, truth, and love. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The scriptures say, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, showing that truth is the actual life of man. But mankind objects to making this teaching practical. There is but one way to heaven, harmony, and Christ in divine science shows us this way. It is to know no other reality, to have no other consciousness of life than good, God and his reflection, and to rise superior to the so-called pain and pleasure of the senses. Sickness, sin, and death are not the fruits of life. They are inharmonies which truth destroys. Perfection does not animate imperfection. Inasmuch as God is good and the fount of all being, 
he does not produce moral or physical deformity. Therefore, such deformity is not real, but is illusion, the mirage of error. Divine science reveals these grand facts. On their basis, Jesus demonstrated life, never fearing nor obeying error in any form. If half the attention given to hygiene were given to the study of Christian science and to the spiritualization of thought, this alone would usher in the millennium. Constant bathing and rubbing to alter the secretions or to remove unhealthy exhalations from the cuticle receive a useful rebuke from Jesus' precept, take no thought for the body. We must beware of making clean merely the outside of the platter. He who is ignorant of what is termed hygienic law is more receptive of spiritual power and of faith in one God than is the devotee of supposed hygienic law who comes to teach the so-called ignorant one. Must we not then consider the so-called law of matter a canon more honored in the breach than the observance? A patient thoroughly booked in medical theories is more difficult to heal through mind than one who is not. This verifies the saying of our Master, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. The infinite never began, nor will it ever end. Mind and its formations can never be annihilated. Man is not a pendulum swinging between good and evil, joy and sorrow, sickness and health, life and death. Revelation 21.21 And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. There was no temple, that is, no material structure in which to worship God, for he must be worshipped in spirit and in love. The word temple also means body. The revelator was familiar with Jesus' use of this word, as when Jesus spoke of his material body as the temple to be temporarily rebuilt, John 2, 21. What further indication need we of the real man's incorporeality than this, that John saw heaven and earth with no temple, body, therein? This kingdom of God is within you, is within reach of each man's consciousness here, and the spiritual idea reveals it. In divine science, man possesses this recognition of harmony consciously in proportion to his understanding of God. The scientific fact that man and the universe are evolved from spirit and so are spiritual is as fixed in divine science as is the proof that mortals gain the sense of health only as they lose the sense of sin and disease. Mortals can never understand God's creation while believing that man is a creator. God's children, already created, will be cognized only as man finds the truth of being. Thus it is that the real ideal man appears in proportion as the false and material disappears. The perfect mind sends forth perfection, for God is mind. Imperfect mortal mind sends forth its own resemblances, of which the wise man said, all is vanity. Principle is absolute. It admits of no error. 
but rests upon understanding. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. Our baptism is a purification from all error. Our bread, which cometh down from heaven, is truth. Let's pray for the congregation, first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's continue with singing hymn number 160. The words to this hymn were written by the discoverer and founder of Christian science, Mary Baker Eddy. It matters not what be thy lot, so love doth guide. For storm or shine, pure peace is thine, whate'er be tied. And of these stones or tyrants' thrones, God able is to raise up seed in thought and deed to faithful his. I, darkling sense, Arise, go hence, our God is good. False fears are foes, truth tatters those, when understood. Love looseth thee, and lifteth me, Iont hates thrall. Their life is light, and wisdom might, and God is all. The centuries break, the earthbound wake, God's glorified, who doth his will, his likeness still, is satisfied. Hymn number 160.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Our services are held online and in person, and all are welcome. Third Church offers Sunday school classes for children and teens, where students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send an email to thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church maintains a reading room on the lower level of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study, where all are welcome. Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly, available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. The members of this church invite you to a Thanksgiving Day service to be held in this church on Thursday, November 24th at 11 a.m. The service will also be accessible online via Zoom and by telephone. For more details, please visit our website, thirdchurchnyc.com. We will also hold the Thanksgiving Day service in Spanish at 1 p.m. This fall, Third Church of Christ Scientists New York City and other Christian Science churches in New York and New Jersey invite you to a series of weekly Saturday evening inspirational radio talks from 7.05 p.m. to 8 p.m. on WOR 710 AM radio and online at wor710.com. The series, titled Spiritual Solutions for Today's Challenges, which began in October and now continues through this month, will help you discover practical spirituality and its connection to improving daily life. The series will address topics such as spiritual discovery in a time of upheaval, why everyone is needed, and love your enemies, to name a few. The experienced, internationally-based speakers are members of the Christian Science Board of Lectureship. The next radio lecture on Saturday, November 19th, is Learn to Pray and Heal, a Spiritual Adventure by Nate Frederick, C.S., This lecture is sponsored by First Church, Haddonfield, New Jersey. Visit our website at thirdchurchnyc.com for links to the program and to hear replays of all the talks. Christian science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever-presence and power in their lives. If you are listening by telephone and would like to share a testimony, press star, then number six. Our technician will be listening for you and will unmute your line. Please speak directly into the microphone of your phone rather than using the speakerphone so that we can hear you. If you are watching via Zoom, Feel free to unmute yourself and speak. Self-abnegation is uh, one of those terms that's not exclusive to Christian sciences, uh, although we possibly use that term more frequently than others. Um, it's, It's a concept that can be daunting, intimidating, unpleasant, 
even St. Paul says that no chastening for the present is um, pleasant. I'm paraphrasing him, of course. When I first came into Christian science, just from having read periodicals that were sent to me from a church in the city in which I was going to graduate school, uh, within about six months, I had two or three healings, instantaneous or very quick, quickly. So I got into my head that Christian science uh, was a form of just making my human life uh, go well and to get rid of um, minor uh, uh, physical inconveniences. <clears throat> As I started studying and I had class instruction, uh, I realized that self-abnegation was going to be a part of Christian science, self-sacrifice, etc. And it didn't make me particularly happy, I have to say. Um, self-sacrifice is necessary for doing anything well in the human picture whether it's art or whether it's athletics, uh, whether it's uh, running a company with integrity and creativity, um, one has got to sacrifice false concepts. And in Christian science, those false concepts are the belief that one could have a mind and identity and individuality separate from and opposed to God. That's sort of the umbrella term for sin. And then, of course, you get down into a whole variety of specifics that one might call sin. But sin is basically a belief in separation from and then opposition to God. When one feels separated, one then feels he needs to survive on his own uh, uh, two feet, and that gets one into trouble the same way as it got Adam and Eve into trouble uh, listening to the serpent. In the New Birth, uh, which is one of the introductory articles in miscellaneous writings, Mrs. Eddy talks about how at some point uh, when we are progressing in, in coming into uh, Christian manhood, she may use womanhood as well, I don't remember, um, we find so much lacking in ourselves. But then she says, but everything we need is being provided by God. God is enabling us to, to be whom he has created us to be. Uh, so self-abnication, uh, uh, I, I find I've got to kind of always pair that with something, uh, wh what is the goal? Uh, the goal is quicker healing. The goal is uh, the appearance of more wholeness and completeness, uh, dominion, grace, etc. Um, and um, we, of course, in perhaps the central symbol of Western civilization anyway, is the cross. The Greeks might not claim that uh, as the central symbol, but certainly uh, in the Christian era, the central symbol is the cross, which is the ultimate in self-abnegation and the road to resurrection and ascension. Thank you for your readings. Um. Thank you for your reading from the desk tonight on humility. And uh, I, um, on the lesson this week, I think it it's it shows there are some passages that, uh, from the writings of Paul that shows that he must have been an athlete. He has lots of athletic images. Uh, he talks about uh, so many run in the race, but one gets the prize and so so run as to uh have mastery and um and he talks about he must he talks about boxing and he, he says so uh, fight i not as one that just has his fist running is waving in the air but is a is a boxer connecting i i think um And athletes have dominion over the body. They they uh, they watch uh, what they eat, uh, either in in quantity or qua uh, quality, and, and try to uh, do that which is necessary to have the the body functioning in tip top shape. Um, uh, there's an exercise regimen. Uh, they work out and do the uh, various things to have dominion over the body. And Paul talks about keeping his body under him, where he has dominion over it and not the other way around. Um, 
there's a there's a different form of athleticism or uh, dominion, and uh, Mrs. Eddy talks about ex- exercising the mind faculties. Uh, there's I once he- heard of a lecturer uh, say, well, Mrs. Eddy says that mind is the only medicine. Then take your medicine. Take the the the, the laws of uh, divine mind and the the spiritual facts and use them, exercise them, exercise the mind faculties. Um, strength to me is, has come to be uh, strength of thought and and how how how. Uh, good are we at uh, holding thought steadfastly to the enduring, the good and the true, that's uh, that's to have spiritual strength. Uh, in, uh, there's a story about uh, the, uh, the, the child that was, uh, had uh, seizures and, and uh, was fall into the fire and the uh, the father asked the disciples to heal him, and they couldn't. And they uh, and they brought the child to Jesus, and he healed the child. And then the disciples asked, "Well, why couldn't we do that?" Because they had been healing. And Jesus says, "This kind goeth out only by prayer and fasting." And uh, there's a passage in Science and Health that my teacher once said, "Well, this is what's meant." Uh, by prayer and fasting. It's in the passage is when sickness or sin tempts you, cling steadfastly to God and his idea. Let nothing but his likeness abide in your thought. Well, that's exercising the mind faculties. That's strength of thought. Um, and let neither fear nor doubt overshadow your clear sense and calm trust that life harmonious as life eternally is, can overcome any painful sense of or belief in that which life is not. Um, and that that's prayer and that's fasting. It's, uh, it's prayer and it's, it's you know, keeping out of thought all that's unlike God. Um, the Christian science uh, teaches a whole new sense of athleticism, if you will. I mean, it's much more than athletics, but it's, it's, it's a sense of strength of thought. And, uh, and it's very humbling to, to reflect on how well uh, one has been holding thought uh, have, in, uh, to the enduring, the good and the true. Uh, I'm very grateful for the teachings of Christian science and, uh, and then its application uh, to daily life. Thank you. For your testimonies, remarks, and prayers during the service, let's close by singing hymn number 318. I'll read the first and third verses. Suffer the children to come to me. This was the master's tender plea. Gentle and loving, they are mine. Ah, will not ye who see this sign come unto me? He who receiveth the word as they, teachable, ready to choose my way, he shall have peace of sin forgiven. He shall in this wise enter heaven. Come unto me. Hymn number 318.